So here we are. Back in the days of beginning algebra. When you first started studying exponents. So one of the first things you would have learned is that any number raised to the zero power is one. So 41 to the zero power is one. That's a one. The square root of 18 to the zero power is one. Seven tenths to the one power. Are you ready? It's one. OK. So that just gets that basic idea across. You're going to find out why tomorrow. Why it's true that any number raised to the zero power is one, one, one. Now, here we have two expressions. multiplied by each other. We're going to be talking about what do you do when you multiply like bases? So we have to talk about what is a base. We have to talk about what is um, an exponent. Well, you know what exponents are, but what is a base? It's easy to lose track of that. Let's look at u to the fourth. This is very important and it's going to stay very important for the rest of the semester, especially at the end of the semester. This is the base. This is the exponent. And that's the exponent. And what the exponent tells you is how many times is the base multiplied by itself. So just to continue the review, u to the fourth power would be u times u times u times u. u multiplied by itself four times. So this is a code for this. So now, we're going to multiply these together, and this is how. We're going to multiply the numbers together. 19 times negative eight. We're going to multiply the u's together. And we're going to multiply the q's together. There. Well, I have no idea what 19 times eight is. Just, well, let's just do this. Uh, 8 times 9 is 72. That's going to be negative 152. I think, please double check me. Now, the way we multiply this is we take note of the fact that the bases are exactly the same. They are both U's. So when we multiply u to the fourth times u to the ninth, that's going to equal u to the four plus nine. It's one of the rules. When you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. Same for the q's here. This is going to be q to the 10 plus four. So we're going to have 
negative 152 times u to the 4 plus 9 is 13. Q to the 10 plus 4 is 14. And that's your answer. How will I remember that? Now, I'm just going to put it in its answer box right here. And my ardent hope is that this will bring back memories and hopefully fond memories, but at least memories. All right, now look at this. We have eight to the negative third power. Yes, remember there are negative exponents. Eight to the negative three times eight to the negative three. The important thing here is that the bases, the eights, are the same. So this is going to be eight to the negative three plus negative three which is going to be eight to the negative six. But, a negative exponent means you have to change the location. So let's just go into the whole long story. Eight to the negative six is the same thing as, 8 to the negative 6 over 1. There are always two locations for numbers and letters. There's upstairs and there's downstairs. This is an indication that this base is written in the wrong place. This needs to go down here, and now the negative six will be a positive six because the eight base is in its correct location. And what do we put up top? You never put a zero you put a one. So now this says simplify. So probably that means, oh, really Barb? Eight. I click on the caret key there to get a power, and then six, and then enter. Yes, well, if I'm really simplifying, which means you work it out, then um, 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 that's going to be, oh, well, it disappeared. 262144. Four. This will be 1 over 266. Six. No. Get this all arranged now. Two, six, two, okay. Two, six, two, one, four, four. Usually they have you leave the answer just like this. But it could be they're looking for you to go all the way, all the way so that this is what's actually in 
the answer box. We're going to do more of these, don't worry. Aha, here we have x to the fifth times x to the negative eighth. That makes x the base. x the base. And when I multiply like bases, I add the exponents. So my answer will be x to the negative three. But remember, this is really x to the negative three over one, because there are two locations, upstairs and downstairs, and x is in the wrong place. I know that because of the negative sign in front of the three. So X has to be put in the correct place where it will have X to the positive three and we put a one on top. Because we can't have any empty apartments, so one has got to occupy the upstairs apartment. So there's our answer. One over X to the third power. Well, what do you know? We have three like bases here that are multiplied together, multiplied together. So I'll have, gee willikers, I have so many colors here. I'll have y to the negative three plus six plus six which is nine. So this is going to be y to the positive ninth. That means y is in the right place. Okay. Now here I have a negative six times X to the negative fourth. It's important that you realize that this is negative six times X to the negative fourth. Only X is being raised to the negative fourth power. Same thing here, times five, times x to the negative third. These, this negative six is not being raised to the negative fourth power, and this five is not being raised to the negative third power. So I'll have negative six times five times x to the negative four plus negative three, which will be negative 30 times x to the negative seven. Ah, we have a negative exponent. Okay, just to be really clear, this is negative 30 times x to the negative seven. Two locations, negative 30 is very happy living upstairs, but x to the negative seven 
needs to move downstairs. He got put in the wrong apartment or the wrong motel room. So our final answer is going to be negative 30 over x to the positive 7 power. And that's your answer. Now we're going to look at the, the uh, uh, rules of division. When you have like bases and you're dividing. Well, this, I always do it, don't I? This is base three to the seven minus three power. So we're going to have three raised to the fourth power, which is three times three times three times three. Now watch what I do to get this on my calculator. I type the base. Then I type this upper triangle, which is called a carrot. Spelled carrot like <clears throat> carrot like a diamond. <coughs> All right, yes. Ah, so what I was doing three carrot four, enter, is 81. Now, for those of you who don't have the newer operating system, uh, let us go to mode, and I'm gonna go down, 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 down. I'm on math print right now, which gives me access to the newer um, operating system, but the older operating system is classic. I'm going to move over to classic, hit enter, and now classic is highlighted. What that means for me is that now I'm going to do this, three carat four. And you see it looks a little different. The four is not elevated, and you can see the carrot. You can see all of your keystrokes. But this three carat four is exactly the same thing as that. So your answer is 81. Now, watch carefully. We have the same base, three. The rule says you take the upper exponent and you subtract the lower exponent. Six minus, and the lower exponent is negative five. So this is going to be three to the six plus five, which is going to be three to the 11th power. And I don't, well, let's see, three carat 11. <laughs> I thought it would be just too large. Your uh, calculator freaks out when it gets large, really large numbers and starts um, 
giving you scientific notation. It will do that eventually, and then we'll talk about how you read it. But no, look at that. There's your answer. Cute. Here is your answer. Boom, 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 boom. So I, st I stuck to the rule, even though that was negative. There is an alternative way that you could have written this. And I've got room to do it right down here. Here's upstairs. Well, I'm going to do it in blue. Upstairs. And downstairs. It's been raining a lot and the downstairs tenant is complaining about all the water flowing into his apartment. In other words, this is in the wrong location. So just to keep peace, the manager moves this guy upstairs next to three to the sixth, who's very happy to just be upstairs. This will be three to the positive five. Change of location. If your negative exponent occurs in the denominator, then move the base up to the numerator and that will give you a positive power. But now I don't have anything down here, sort of. I actually have a one. So this is going to be three to the six times three to the fifth, which will be three to the six plus five over one. But of course, over one, I mean, really? Three to the 11th power, and we know what that is, over one, which is the same thing as just three to the 11th power, which we now know is 177147. Of course, you would have to get the same answer. So you have choices when you're working with the rules of exponents. See, we turned it into a multiplication problem. Okay, here we go. Got another one. The bases are the same. So this, so this is 15 to the top power minus the bottom power. Now, for those of you thinking, isn't there a shortcut? Yes, but I'm not going to go into it yet. So this will be 15 to the negative 8 power, which is 1 over 15 to the positive 8 power. Now I am going to see if this can truly be simplified. 15 carat 8. It can. What can I say? Ooh, there. 1 over 15 to the 8th power is 1 over 2, 5, 6, 2, 8, 9, 0, 6, 2, 5. And you don't really have to put in your commas, but if you want to, there you go.
putting in the commas is frowned upon in mathematics. Anything that's not numbers and letters is evil. Or suspect. Well, this is cute. All right. Like bases. Five to the negative five minus negative three is going to be five to the negative five plus positive three. So we're going to have five to the negative two, which is one over five to the positive two, which is one over 25. I hope you're okay. That was one over 25, right? Now you see, we just keep doing the same thing. Might as well do this. The bases are alike. K to the six minus negative eight equals K to the six plus eight, which will be K to the 14th power. And that is simplified. Now we get to do something more interesting, thank goodness. You can think of this this way. You have 15 over negative five. times x to the fifth over x to the, yes. x to the fifth over x to the third times z to the third over z to the one. This has a one power. So we have three things to work on here. We're going to have 15 divided by negative five is negative three. Here we have like bases, so we'll have x to the five minus three, z to the three minus one. which will give us negative three x to the two z to the two. You are free to stop me if you have a question. It's okay to have questions. I'm not going to yell and scream at you. You should already know this. Some of you do and some of you don't. That's life. Ooh, that's ugly, but we can manage this. Maybe. Let us split this into 
three fractions. We're going to have negative 18 over 12 times x to the sixth over x to the negative five times y to the eight over y to the 10. Okay, you can always put this in your calculator. Let's do it for a review. Negative 18 divided by 12. I push the math button. Frack is right there at the top, so I hit enter. And then I hit enter again. That's negative three over two. You can make the calculator do a lot for you. So this is going to be negative three over two times x to the six minus negative five. And since we have a fraction here, we're going to put this over 1. And y to the 8 minus 10. And let's put that over 1. All right, so you're going to have negative 3 over 2 times x to the 11th, well, I skipped a step, oops. X to the six plus five over one times Y to the negative two. Yes, I've already got that written, negative two. And we put that over one so that what we have right now is negative three over two times x to the 11 over one times, I didn't mean to do that, times one over y to the positive two. So what we're going to do now is multiply all our num. Oh, I like that line. Multiply all our numerators together and multiply all our denominators together. And we will have three times X to the 11 times one over two times one times Y squared. That was tricky. Mixing negative exponents and positive exponents. How do you do it? This is how. Questions about this or anything so far? I don't have any questions. Great. And I have no idea who's there and who's not. So, oh, we're getting to a new rule, finally. When you have a base raised to a power and then raised to a power again, you multiply the powers. So this is five to the eight times four, which is five to the 32. I'm, I would bet a penny that five raised to the 32 power is going to be 
much too big, and it is. So, no, we're leaving it like that. All right, now it says simplify, give answers using positive exponents. Leave your answer in exponential notation. Good. That means I, I leave the answer like this. I leave it with exponents. All right, this is going to be 13 to the 4 times negative 10. You have a base raised to a power and raised to a power again. Thirteen to the negative 40. Which is one over. Thirteen to the positive 40. All right, when you have a base raised to a power, raised to a power again, you multiply the powers. Now here, you have a base raised to a power, raised to a power again. We're going to do the same old thing. Negative 9 times negative 3. Negative times negative is positive, so this will be 3 to the 27th power. Now we're extending this rule a little bit, but I'm going to break this down into steps. What this is first is this. This is five. This is five to the one, by the way. 5 to the 1 to the 3rd power times x to the 5th to the 3rd power times y to the 7th to the 3rd power. And now you apply the base raised to a power raised to a power again to every one of these. So you're going to have 5 to the 3rd, x to the 15th, because 5 times 3 is 15, and y to the 7 times 3 is 21, and I bet they give the answer is 125 x to the 15th power times y to the 21st power. I bet you. Because 5 to the 3rd is not that big a number. If you stay in math classes, you're going to find that you just end up memorizing things that you never plan to memorize. It just happens. Okay. Yep, we only have 21 of these. Now there is 
something you can do or not do with these. For instance, we can just take the direct approach here. We can take the negative four. And multiply it by the six and the negative four. And multiply it by the negative two. So this will be four to the six times negative four. Over. Seven to the negative two times negative four. And that will be four to the negative 24 over seven to the positive eight. Ah, oh, this guy's unhappy where he's living. So, move him down to the first floor. We'll have one over seven to the eighth power times four to the 24th power. And the answer says simplify your answer, type exponential notation, which means have exponents in your answer, with positive exponents. That is, don't leave the answer like this, make it like this, but this is an acceptable answer. You don't have to make those into one number. And no, look at this. The bases are different, so you cannot add the exponents. Or if you do, it's wrong. The rule about adding exponent on, exponents only applies if the bases are exactly the same. And finally, yeah, we could have done this a different way also, but why bother? Well, here's a reason to bother. You know that rule in order of operations? This is really going down memory lane. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. You always work inside the parentheses first. Then you work with the exponents. Then you do the multiplication and division from left to right. They're on the same order of importance. And then you do the addition and subtraction as they occur from left to right because they're on the same order of importance. Well, here we have parentheses. And we've got, wow, we've got like bases here. We have an R over an R and an S over an S. We need to take care of that before. We consider that negative five. OK. So this is going to be three to the one over five to the one times r to the negative two minus negative four times s to the one minus four. All of that will eventually be raised to the negative five power. But let's work on this. Equals 
3 over 5 r to the negative 2 plus 4 s to the 1 minus 4, which is negative 3, to the negative 5. I just have an answer to the question that I asked up here when I said, why bother? There was no reason to bother to do the other method I was going to show you up there, but there is down here. But we'll discuss it first. It's just nice when I get a question answered. All right, three over five. R to the negative two plus four is R to the positive two. And I've got an S to the negative three. I might as well move it downstairs and let it be S to the positive three. to the negative five. Okay. Now, we're gonna have a little talk. I spent time and energy cleaning up the inside of my parentheses before I got here. And doesn't it look better than it did look? I mean, really, look at what you started with and look at it now. I mean, it's beautiful now. And there's a one and a one. If I multiply the negative five by all the exponents here, they're all gonna be negative and then I've gotta move them around again. But there is a very neat trick that you use when you are able to clean up the parentheses first. Now, over here, we were not able to. I mean, different bases. I would have gained nothing by doing what I'm about to do. And that is, since we've got all positive exponents here, and there's nothing to be gained by making them temporarily negative and having to move them all around again, you can do this. How to say this, okay. Three to the one, r to the 2 over 5 to the 1 s to the 3 negative 5 is negative 1 times 5 correct i mean yeah i'm correct so if i do the following if I apply the negative one before I apply the positive five, this is what the negative one is going to do to this fraction. Anytime you've got a negative one exponent used with a fraction, that gives you the reciprocal of the fraction. So that negative one is going to cause the following thing to happen in the parentheses. that. Now, if you ask, well, what happened to the negative sign? Well, I turn the negative sign into a negative one, 
And then I used the negative one to take the reciprocal of this fraction. In other words, turn it upside down. Plump. Now I'm going to raise everything in there to the fifth power. This is five raised to the one power times five is five. S to the third raised to the fifth power is three times five, which is 15. S to the 15th power over three to the fifth power times R, well, down here times R to the 10th power. And that is your answer. Now, I'm going to take, I'm going to just see what five to the fifth, oh, I know what five, do I know what five to the fifth power is? Let's just do it. No, I didn't, I would have put the wrong number. Three, one, two, five. So our final answer is three, one, two, five, S to the 15th power over three carat five, no, not 55. I am so glad for the delete key right here. It's a blessing. 243 are to the tenth. And I'm going to make this smaller. This is the last problem here. I'm going to make this smaller by, ah, by doing this. There we are. Here's what I did. The first thing I did was where I had like bases, I used the division rule, which gave me that, which gave me this. I didn't use the negative five at all. But as long as I've got all positive exponents in the parentheses, I'm going to use the negative one first. The negative one just flips the fraction since it applies to the whole fraction. Then all I have to do is multiply all the powers by five. And then I went ahead and I, I said, okay, I found five to the fifth and three to the fifth. And that gave me my final answer, which is, 3125s to the 15th over 243 r to the 10. And these are the basic rules of exponents. I say basic because there's one more that you're going to encounter in the next homework. And there's no way we'll finish it today, but we can start to delve into it so you can meet that, that fourth rule. Here are the rules we worked on today. Um, let's just use X. Okay, X to the M times X to the N equals X to the M 
plus n. Okay, this just says when you multiply like bases, you add your powers. When you divide like bases, you subtract your powers. And x to the negative 3 equals 1 over x to the positive 3. And 1 over x to the negative 5 equals x to the positive 5. And x to the 0 equals 1. And Oops. X to the M raised to the N equals X to the M times N. So these are your basic rules of exponents that you were first introduced to in beginning algebra or algebra one. Now we're going to take a very brief look at the reason I stuck this in before the next homework. And I did look and see who had done the, the next homework. And there were three people out of the whole class, two of whom made 100% and one of whom did not. So I thought, hmm, it may be a necessary survival deal to actually spend time going over reviewing the basic rules of exponents so that when you get to the next homework, is this it? Yeah. which is this, you'll be more or less prepared. Now, why would square roots have anything to do with exponents? And the answer is they have everything to do with exponents, since you asked. Suppose I have, let's say a cube root. The cube root of eight is two. There's a reason. Because this number, two, raised to the third power is eight. It's two times two times two, which is eight. So that's how I find out what number I need to multiply by itself three times. Not multiply the two times the three, but multiply two times two times two three times, okay? to get an eight, which is under there. And that's the number of times you multiply that number by itself to get that number. And this is called, what is that called? This is called the, oh, it's stuck in my brain. Stuck in my brain and not coming forward, so it will, it will. But until then, let me go over this. Suppose you have a base, you've got a square root, you've got a cube root, you've got a fourth root, you've got a fifth root, and so on, you've got a sixth root. And these X's are all X to the one.
and you're going to learn something about a square root here that you may not have known before. There's an invisible two. Right there. The number that tells you how many times you have to multiply another number by itself in order to get whatever that number is. Anyway, there is an alternative way of writing all this. And that, we're going to apply it to this. You can also take the square root of x and write it as x to the one half and the cube root of x and write it as x to the one third and the fourth root of x and write it as x to the one fourth index that's an index we'll talk about the other parts tomorrow because i know probably dealing with all of these uh, rules of exponents at once, because they were usually split up on separate days back in beginning algebra. You know, it's a little wearying. The fifth root of x is x to the one fifth. And the sixth root of x is x to the one sixth and so on. So any kind of root can be expressed as a fraction. You can even have interesting stuff like this. Suppose you have the fifth root of x squared. This can also be written as x to the 2 over 5. So whenever, whenever you have a fraction exponent, it's called a rational exponent, but we can call it a fraction exponent. Whenever you have a fraction exponent, that's the same thing as having a root, where this down here is the index, index, and this is the exponent of what's called the radicand. or the base of the radicand. The base that's inside there is now the base of the exponent out here, that exponent, the fraction exponent, radicand. There's probably a better way to say that and I'll have to look at it. So notice that that two is what goes up there and this five is what goes down here. But they follow the same rules. For instance, x to the 3 fourths power times x to the 2 thirds power is really x to the 3 fourths plus 2 thirds. And yes, children, you are finally going to be adding and subtracting fractions. So we are also going to be finding LCDs. But those are the same thing as the LCMs that we were just finding. They're found exactly the same way. So we'll do that tomorrow also. 
But this is the fourth rule. Oh yeah, eight to the one third power. The cube root of eight equals two can also be written as eight to the one third power equals two. They're the same thing. Okay. You are free to go. If you don't have any questions you want to ask about what we covered today or about anything. <laughs>